gentlemen, we're back again. We're we're ranking OU mons and how they make me feel. Cause there's a difference to viability and how something makes you feel. You know, there really is. <clears throat> now I've got sixty nine mons here. Uh ranked not yet, because that's what this is for, but I just added them randomly. Um they used to be in alphabetical order, but I messed around a bit. I've also included Zamazenta. Crown, specifically. Because <laughs> you know for a fact they're testing this mon. Uh, I think this is updated. Yeah, I don't have Kieran Black. I don't have Zygarde. I mean, those things would have just been in this tier anyway, because I hate them. Anyway, what do the tiers mean? <laughs> so this is reserved. This, <laughs> this shit is ass. Is reserved for uh, the mons that owe you technically, but you know that owe you because like, you know, you have the the species of creatures that try to use them and owe you, and it's like, wow, guys, this mons really good. Come on, haha. <laughs> Interesting friend, something else is exactly what it is. You know, there's mons that are cool in the tier, but not too cool. You know what I mean? You know, it, it'll make sense. Uh, it exists, are very much just mons I'm very neutral about. The Dragapult tier is mons that I'm fine putting on teams, and like I'm happy to have them on teams, but they're never mons I want to build around. Such as Dragapult, you know? <laughs> you can slap Dragapult on a lot of teams and it would just function well with whatever set you give it. And it's always nice to have a mon with that type of speed or whatever. But you know, very rarely am I saying, okay, I want a Dragapult team, you know? I mean, it's a nice mon. But, you know. Then there's the worth building around here. Now, these are mons, I'm thinking, you know, they have flaws, obviously. But it's quite easy to patch them up, and I feel like they're gonna be fun, even with those flaws. You know, these are your slow, strong breakers, your fast mons that might be weak to hazards, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat. And then a real one. Now, you know who real ones are. You can see them on your screen right now. You already know. Which one of these are real ones? So let's get started uh, by putting something in the ass tier. Blaziken! Now this thing is actually shockingly bad, all things considered. Like, it's not bad, like, as a mon. Like, obviously it's it's close to being OU worthy, but it's just impressive how, how much of a drop has actually happened over the gen. I mean, what makes Blaziken bad? Well, it needs an SD, and it needs a speed boost, because it's super quick mons mater. You know, one speed boost isn't outspeeding everything anymore. You've got Scarfers, you've got mons like Feromosa, you've got Regieleki, you've got all this stuff. And you've got pretty strong Parodium mater, you've got Barrister to Rain, you have, uh... Holutra and Terrain, you know, there's a lot of stuff. And more than anything, it doesn't break stuff too well. You know, super strong water types like Pex and Slowbro, resisting its dual stabs, really annoys it a lot. Uh, especially when Thunder Punch is not the type of coverage you want to be carrying, and it kind of needs Thunder Punch, but it also needs EQ, because then it can't break Pex, but if it doesn't have Thunder Punch, then it can't break Slowbro or Zapdos. And, you know, it struggles with Moltres quite a bit as well, and if it gets Static Parrot, it's basically over. It's a mom that's just not fun to use at all. And it just feels bad when you use it. Honestly, it's just... Ugh, you know? Just ugh. I'll get to Zera Aura. I really like this one in OU currently. I think the speed it provides is very good, and comparing it to its fellow fast electric counterparts, the ability to actually pressure ground types along with having knockoff as an option is very nice. Uh, honestly, I think it is worth building around. I think Zeroar is a very cool mon, and I think it's it's dropped off quite a bit, obviously. I mean, I do think it's not the strongest right now, but I think it's a mon that can definitely, like, work on a team. And I definitely think it's worth looking into more. So we're just a mammoth swine. What a man. What a real man's Pokemon. But I don't think I can call it a real one. Or can I? No, this is a real one for sure. Mammoth swine, absolute chad. I mean, look at it. It's a mammoth. It's a swine. It's Minecraft. 
I mean, Mammoth, Mammoth Shrine just kind of does what it does. I mean, look at these next few months. Dice to ice to trash, dice 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 to ET, dice to trash, dice to trash. It's just... There's a lot of dragon types, obviously, in Matera. There's a lot of flying types in Matera as well. Very few things like switch into a spawn. It's a... It just feels good to have it on a team. Ice Shard's always super good. Su always feels quite reliable as well. Just to have an Ice Shard in the back. In case something like Spectre gets too much out of hand. Like Dragapult, wherever this thing is. You know, it's a real one. Now it's torn. I'm torn on torn, you know? Because it's, it's a... You know what? I have a, I have a tier specifically for being torn. Of course, it exists. This mon's definitely not bad in the It's definitely not too good. Currently, I think both of the Galar birds are outclassing it in terms of its usual bulkier sets. Nasty plots are definitely a good addition, though, and I think Boots' nasty plots, especially on Rain, is super interesting. But generally, it's just a mon that's there, and I think it's a mon that's just alright. Now, Hydreigon, uh, it's another mon like Mammoth White and like Zerora. Doesn't have OU usage currently, I don't believe. Which I for actually. Uh are you Yeah, it's it's you currently, but this mon is definitely OU viable. It's a super solid breaker, able to break through pretty much everything in the tier with the right coverage. Obviously Draco incredibly good, especially when it's basically the strongest Draco in the game. Because realistically, the stronger Dracos are on Unusable, pretty much, in OU. Latios and Kyurem. Which kind of just means, you know, for the speed it provides, the pivoting it provides, you know, this thing's insane. I love it. Nasty plots are obviously huge for it. And just the coverage it gets. And DD, technically an option. No, no, that's... I just think it's great. I think it's worth looking into a lot. Because... In the in the slew of dark types we have, you know, like a Shifu, like uh Mandibuzz. We don't actually have that many, but you know, it's it's a nice option. And it's definitely worth like you know, oh I need a dark type answer. Wow, it's Hydrogen. Good check to Spectria. Good check to a lot of slower stuff that it can set up on. Still is able to beat Clef with a life orb, especially now it's running Fizz Death. Just able to do a lot to a lot of Monza Matea, and it's very good at that. Also really good at stopping, you know, anything. It's just nice. It's just an overall solid, nice thing. I would get to Latios, which I'm gonna have to also put in the worth building around here. Similar story, really, with uh, Hydreigon. Trades a little bit of, trades the pivoting, trades the arguably better typing currently for that little bit of speed, which really makes a difference. 110 is super good right now, especially with its new coverage. It can kind of do a lot of rolls. Spike, Scarf, Calm Mind, Life Orb, Roost. It's got a lot of sets, and it's got a lot of good sets as well. Uh, still kind of lights Earthquake to nail Heatran. But our Aura Sphere is really good, Mystical Fire obviously for Pharaoh is super good as well, and the classic Draco Psyshock Shock combo is always good, as well as Trick. I believe this thing gets Memento, yeah, this thing gets Memento, Latias gets uh, Healing Wish. Memento's cool on a choice set. And I think it's just a really solid mon. I think a lot of mons that have very strong Dracos are always worth looking into. Because I think Draco is just such a good move. That, like, it can definitely make a mon if it's good at using said move. And I think, you know, as long as its secondary qualities are in of itself redeeming, it's definitely worth looking at. Because, you know, I'll go back to the Draco list. You know, Drampa is the strongest Draco in the game outside of uh, Reggie Draco uh, and uh, a couple other dragon. I think Dragaldi might have a stronger one. Just go over, uh, pardon me. Uh, adaptability. But, like, those mons are slow, they're not too bulky, their secondary typing's okay. I mean, Dredalgus is nice. Dredalgus is obviously the better mon there, but you know, it's kind of just. You gotta have something more than that. Which you gotta look for. I don't get Pelipper. 
I think rain's very good right now. I enjoy Pelipper as a breaker outside of rain. Well, technically in rain because it's setting its own rain. But outside of a fully dedicated rain team, Pelipper's just fun. Rain's always fun. And I mean, I guess I should probably just group the rain monster together. Get Barrasuda up here. I'm, I'm a fan of OU Barrasuda. Water propeller tail swift swim. And there's gotta be another rain mon I'm missing. Uh, yeah, she for rabbit's time just relegate it to rain. I think it's definitely all right outside of it, but it's a rain mon for sure. And uh, anything else? Anything I'm missing? I guess not really. No. Yeah. Ours is kind of fallen off, and Manaphy's not in the game yet. Not like just gonna be that good on rain without tail blow, but yeah, rain's cool. Rain's always cool. Sun, on the other hand, let's get this out of the way. Sun is definitely interesting, and it always feels like it has a good matchup against me. But at the same time, the type of... You know, it kind of promotes a hyper-offense playstyle. Which is in no way bad, but it means it can be very inconsistent, and it requires a lot of effort out of a player. To actually be, you know, able to consistently pull it off. And I do think it's very solid, but, you know, Dom hurting itself... Even Venus or hurting itself with Life Orb. You know, damage can rack up. But reliance on Torkoal for a lot of things, especially scenes that Torkoal kind of needs to run rest just to win weather wars against monsters like Pelipper, and especially like Titar right now. And I mean, even Hippo, you could argue, is pretty good in OU currently as well. Uh, it's, it, it has a rough time, especially compared to Pelipper. So I'd probably just put it in this here. You know, it's cool, but. Nah. And I mean, I guess you could pile Blazekin there, but Blazekin's just a different breed of ass, alright? <laughs> now, what about Moltres? Moltres, first Dragapult tier mon. This mon is a mon you're gonna put in a lot of your teams. It just checks a lot right now. It's a very solid mon. Very good at checking mons like Katana, like Heatran with Scorching Sands now, which is really nice. Uh, Ferrothorn, uh, most variants of Ferramosa, the special set, definitely. Gets on its nerves. Uh, Dallas Aptos. I mean, arguably, uh, you go for like Jirachi as well in here. You know, it's just a nice mon. And also Melmetal, wherever I put Melmetal. It's just super good switch. Generally, into just physical attacks in general. I've listed those mons, but as long as you're not like a Drake's ult, you can pivot into fighting like any physical move really easily. And if you get that burn, it's basically over for them. Like, this is a pseudo-check to a Shifu single, especially if you can get a burn off. Which is kind of insane, like, realistically. I do think it's be it's so good because of its synergy with other mons. I think Clef has extremely good synergy with the mon, just being able to check pretty much the entire physical metagame. And then being able to pair, like, a last mon, like, maybe, like, a Pex to also deal with most of the special side of the metagame, you know, or, uh, say, like, Spadef Pharaoh as well, always solid. You know, it's just good, really good. It's not, it's not a real one, you know, I'm not making, I love Moltres, but it's not Mama Swine, you know? It's not like you're clicking, you know, Specs Hurricane all the time. You know? <laughs> Anyway, we got Landorus. I hate to say it, but Landorus is kind of a real one. Landorus is just there for you whenever you need it. And I usually it would go in the Dragapult tier, but it's just built different. I mean, the lack of high horsepower is definitely a little annoying, but now that Rillaboom's definitely phased out of popularity because of just mons like even Spadef Heatran, mons like uh, Moltres, obviously, mons like Zapdos, Torn. Ferrothorn, who was on the t in the tier before. It's been a very rough meta game for Rillaboom to survive. And it generally means that you don't be seeing less of it. And it means Lando can pretty much check every physical attack from the tier to a pretty damn good degree. It's one of the few mons who's going to be able to check Zamazenta when it comes out extremely consistently. It's a mon that can check. <sighs> Pretty much every physical mon I've listed, as long as it doesn't have ice coverage. You know, I mean, it's a similar story to Moltres. 
But Moltres is usually a little bulkier, you know, it's run like, like Flamethrower, Scorching Sands, but it has to run like Roost Defog or like U Turn on one of those slots. And it's always running Boots and Flame Buddy. Lando always got that Intimidate, always got that EQ. It's doing damage, it's doing whatever you want. Is it your Rocker? Is it your Defogger? Is it a Setup Sweeper? Is it a Special Attacker? Lando just provides. And that's all I need to say. Now, Latias, I'm just gonna put it next to Latias. I think they're very similar mons. Obviously, I think they function quite differently. I think Latias is definitely the better Carmind mon. I think it obviously also might function better on choice sets, just because it has the, like, arguably better move to use in Healing Wish when it wants to go down, and the power drop off isn't too severe. There's few mons that are taking Latias' attacks that aren't taking Latios's. I do think the drop-off and power can be seen a lot in the coverage moves it's using, but it just means you have to build a team that's more specialised in beating its counters like Ferroform, like Heatran, like Melmetal. And I do think it's just another cool mon to build around. Coco, very good. Very good mon. But where do I put it? Because I think it's definitely... Because Coco is still super good. I think people have definitely overreacted somewhat since Gen 7. Because in Gen 7, Coco was arguably too good. Because along with everything it does, it was also a breaker, which it never should have been. I think Coco is, right now where it is, is at, I think, the most pure version of itself that it's seen. It's a very fast electric type with a really good support move pool and a solid damage output, all things considered. And the ability to punish ground types with Grass Knot or Dazzling Gleam. Very solid overall, it did not need physical coverage as much as it would have become an awful lot stronger with it. Definitely didn't need it. <sighs> Sorry, I've been tired recently. But could I, with a full heart, recommend it? Because I think currently it's a mom that's definitely, I think, more specialized in hyper-offense teams. It's definitely not as spamble as it was in Gen 7. I'd probably have to put it, you know, in this tier. I think it's definitely cool, but I'm not a HO person. Kinda, you know, I don't get that same... That same feeling, you know. You know? Yeah. You know, I'm building with Zeraora and I'm like, Ooh, Zeraora! And I'm building with Kroger and I'm like, yeah. Dragonite Arvis is a real one. You know you love Dragonite. The absolute original. The realest dragon of all. Classic extreme speed. EQ. Outrage. Draco. It does it all. It just smacks things up. Choice Band is definitely my favorite set. I think it's an incredibly strong Choice Band mod right now. 134. Insanely good. With Ice Punch, all of a sudden it doesn't really get bulled by Lando, and you could obviously swap out EQ if you wanted uh, to hit uh, Moltres harder, but EQ is obviously very nice to hit uh, Pex harder. And obviously there's DD, there's subsets, I mean, this thing has multi scale, <laughs> you know, Boots is incredibly good. This mon's just solid overall. I'm a big fan of where it is right now. I also think more, like, utility base sets, you know, Heal Bell Roost, maybe Thunder Wave, is definitely gonna, I think, once the meta develops, and once Mons Light, uh, Ferramosa are banned, I think it'll be able to come into its own even more than it has now. But right now, I'm a very big fan of it. Great result, uh... This is gonna probably start my Sand Tangent. Uh, Sand's a cool type of team. Uh, mainly just because of Drake's ult, though. You know, Drake's ult, Sand, in UU was kind of tearing up the tier. Which is why it's one of the very few mods actually banned. And I mean, it makes perfect sense. Drake's ult's just a super solid mod. Bolt Beak, with its special coverage, super good. Mainly thanks to its very respectable mix stats. A hundreds, not bad. Pretty good attack. You know, 80's not too bad either. 
I mean, Sand Rush with Bolt Beach. I mean, that's kind of just what you're looking for. Life Orb, you can run Adamant because you're decent speed, obviously in sand as well. <coughs> just, just nice. And I will add uh, Hippo to this. I think Hippo is reserved for sand teams looking to have their sand setter be a lot more uh, survivable than T-Tar. Not saying that T-Tar is not survivable anyway, but t is a different mod altogether. And I think I'll also put X Drill here. Drill's obviously a very good HO lead as well, but uh, otherwise it's kind of a sand mon. You know, I haven't really seen it too much recently. It's definitely a very fun playstyle to play around, but uh, not always, you know? Not always. Now we get to Feeny, another Dragon Pult tier mon. Feeny's definitely extremely good currently. You know, a solid defogger, it beats Heatran. It beats a lot of the dragons. You know, it loses quite a few of the steels, but it's very easy to make that up. It's the start of a water, fire, water, grass, or fairy dragon steel core. You know, it's just doing all, all it needs to. Still a solid defog, even with getting rid of its terrain. It can even use that to its advantage with defog toxic sets. Tar mind inspects have been very cool to see recently, and it's always going to do taunt sets extremely well as well. Just an overall very good mon. And you never sad to have Feeny on your team because it just feels so consistent. Let's go to Magnazone. The real one right here. <laughs> you know Magnazone's a real one. This thing just makes the tier a lot of fun. Just let's have a look at every steel type in the tier. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> uh, obviously, losing uh, Hidden Power Fire. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. But it still traps what can be very important for some mons, which is called Ferrothorn, I think, and Heatran as well. Arguably, you can get quite a lot of chip on Heatran just because, you know, people think that Magnet Pull is reserved for just trapping Corv and that type of stuff. <sighs> you know, coming in just trapping it and just killing it before it U-turns. But honestly, I think Vault, I think your Magnet Pull can be used in a surprising amount of ways. I think because Magnet Zone is going to be faster than a lot of Heat Trans. Not all, and I think Scarf is definitely a more consistent way of chipping Heat Tran. It's then able to come in, chip the Heat Tran down, obviously, and then switch out into potentially another mom that scares Heat Tran out. But the thing is, you're always getting damage before you scare it out. Which is really good, honestly. Because most of the time, their heat tra their, like, a man zone check will be something like Heatran. Or Drill. Or even, you know, Medina, arguably. But Medina gets smacked up by Steel Beam. It's just a solid mon. You know, it enables quite a few mons in the tier. I definitely think it's really good against, you know, a lot of the good fairies as well. Like, you got stuff like Clef that dies. You got, you know, something like Tabu Fini <laughs> that just kind of goes down as soon as it has to hit the field. Obviously, really good against, you know, rain in general. Great answer to Pex as well. It's able to honestly just break a lot of the balanced cores going around. Like the clefts, like the pecs, like the zapdos or moltres, the tawns, you know, all the shebang. It's able to do well into all of them, and honestly, it's just cool, damn it. You know, you add magnets into a team, it's like, it's time. Uh, then we get Age Slash. This can't go here. This is another mod that isn't in OU. Honestly, I included a lot of them, but I think it's definitely viable. Once again, a very strong solid breacher with incredibly good bolt sets. Ability to pressure just about every mon in the tier with one of its sets. Outside of arguably Mandibuzz, which isn't that good right now. You know, Mandibuzz doesn't check Spectria perfectly. And for not checking it perfectly, it's not doing too much else in the tier. But, I mean, anyway, that's why I come to Mandibuzz. <coughs> You know what, no. I'm putting Mandibus in it exists because it's pretty alright and it's okay to use, but there's mons that do it just better. Anyway, where was I? Age Slash, yeah. It's cool. 
but I think there's stuff that's cooler. I think in terms of building around it, specs is always nice, but I just think, you know, look at these ones instead. Look at sun and set. Well, look at sun. Pfft. Look at sand and rain. Look at stuff like hydrogen, Velades. It just feels like they're a lot more convenient to use, and it puts you as a player in a lot less of a bad position for using them. <laughs> and it just feels, you know, it feels cool, but it doesn't feel that cool. You know, it's all about the feeling. <laughs> Which is why Medjian is going <laughs> but no. Medjian is going the, in the It Exists tier. It's a pretty good mon. It's not honestly too good right now, which is surprising. It's definitely going to be too good after a while, but not right now. Uh, has a bunch of sets. Obviously, the uh, Dual Dance set is incredibly good in, like, Lower Ladder. Then, you know, Specs and whatever other sets it likes to run. You know, Trick Room, whatever. It's just, <laughs> honestly... I mean, I'm saying that, you know, good Dracos are nice to spam. What about Fairy-type Draco? <laughs> Where you get special Moxie. You know, it's just not... <clears throat> it's just not fun. Honestly, I think that's all I need to say. <laughs> really. It's just, it exists. It's it's usable, obviously. But it's not, not a... Not a mon that elicits a good, positive response. You know, it does Katana. This mod's cool as hell. This one's the strongest unboosted mod in the entire meta game. And it can boost itself. And it's fast. And it has Spheriform's defense stat. Wow. Katana's great. I love mods that are just completely min-maxed into doing one specific thing. As you can probably tell. And having a super strong mod like Katana is always really fun to have on a team. I do think its weakness to the birds currently is almost crippling to it. <clears throat> and that's never going away. I think Katana Zamont is able to handle them pretty well thanks to having the damage output to be able to run Scorching Sands. Not Scorching Sands. Protective Pads. While running an SD set, while clicking knockoff whenever it forces a switch, because this is a mod that forces switches, and I mean it's very easy to abuse those switches because a lot of the time they're flying types, especially if you knock them off the first time. If they're trying to check Katana again, you can really abuse that switch because now they're taking 25 from rocks, and now you're like if you double into you know like a Tita, like whatever. I mean now they're on the back foot and it's. Just a really good mon at forcing that type of positioning. <laughs> and that's just nice. It's nice to have a mon that's very one dimensional, but I can just click a button and it just, you know, it's nice. Kiram, absolute real one. But can I put it in the tier? No. Kiram's definitely fallen off a bit. I think he's going to come back after, uh, you know, the tier settles down. And, you know, I'm saying the tier settles down. I think it's in a very weird spot because of Ferrobosa currently. As well as, you know, a couple other mons. I mean, I could definitely see <laughs> the tier not changing much, but... It's it's weird. The tier's weird right now. Mainly because there are definitely quite a few mons that arguably should be banned. I mean, honestly, a Shifu single strike should have been suspect tested before, and Cinderi shouldn't have been re-allowed, nor should Makana, but, you know, here we are. Uh, very solid mon though, Kiram. Uh, another really strong breaker. What Latios has in speed and uh, a pretty good move pool to hit a lot of its neutral checks. Kiram doesn't really have checks. <laughs> Dragon Ice is just a super good dual stab typing. Offensively, with Focus Blast, Earth Power, and even Flash Cannon technically being options for the spec set. The subset's really good as well, but not too well suited to fighting, you know, offense teams. But, I mean, I do think it's a very interesting mon for, like, for fat matchups if you need just a mon that can deal with them. Space is definitely its best set, though. And I think Kirim also trades, you know, that speed from Latios for a surprising amount of bulk. Because we go to Kirim, uh down here in UU. Are you? 
Uh, yeah, I can't read. God, it just feels weird to scroll down to R, U, and C this month. Freeze drive was just huge for it, though. And 125.99 is super good bulk. It's taking multiple neutral hits. And with Roost, you can take a damn lot of them. And especially with Weather Ball on some weather teams as well, it's very cool to add on them. Especially Sun, I think, is his best weather. But then again, Sun, you know. I mean, obviously. You know, if you're playing Sun, I think Kiram's definitely an interesting choice. <sighs> but I can't make it a real one, because I can't fit it on that many teams. No, I can't fit on every team, though. Heatran! This is the realest Mana Matera, and you all know it is. Alright. Heatran does many things. It sets rocks. It kills things. That's pretty much it, but it does it in a lot of different ways. <laughs> like, I look at so many mons, like, just on this list, and Kiram either traps and beats it, straight up beats it, or sets rocks and then just leaves. <laughs> you know, the lack of, I guess, like, I guess, Dutro and Matea, but more just the lack of kind of... I don't know, it just doesn't really have very solid answers, because every physical answer has to risk a flame body burn, every special answer has to remember that it's spread off Heatran, <laughs> fat answers have to deal with Magma Storm dealing percentage damage per turn, and taunt, it just beats so many months. I mean, you have to be super effective against Heatran if you want to win against it. And it does occasionally put it in a bad position, because teams are kind of obligated to run a ground type right now. <laughs> and it's just kind of, you know, if you're running a ground type, Heatran is slightly less of a threat, but Heatran still punishes those ground types. If Heatran plumes on a Lando coming in and it's burnt, you've won that interaction, and they thought they made a good play. You know, it's just that type of mon. It's just a real one. It just makes the game in your favor as soon as you send it out. And I mean, look at Heatran. Look at it. <laughs> Let's put them together. The best friends. <laughs> uh, Sweet Tune. Uh, I definitely think it's worth building around. Sweet Tune's a very cool, bulky wind tone currently. Calm Mind. I think Vin Tune's probably best, which is the uh, sub protect set for leftovers recovery. Uh, <coughs> Grotoon's always cool, but Lost Status is more from Static and Flame Body more than uh, actual Clicking Toxic. But you know there are definitely mods like Swampert right now that are Clicking Toxic, though you punish Swampert because you hit it neutrally. You know, <coughs> it's a lot of stuff Sweetrun can do. And it's just cool. I mean, look at Sweetrun, it's another cool mon. It's a cool mon. But I feel like it's going to become better and better as the tier progresses. But right now, and especially when Zydar was big, it was a super good mon. Now here's our Shifu. <laughs> this is another Dragapult. I think this one should probably get banned. It's, you know what, let's just add all the Dragapult mons <laughs> at this point. Uh, Melmetal. Uh... Dragapult, <laughs> Pex, Zapdos, um, anything else, Blissey, anything else, Clef, anything else, Ferrofor, <laughs> anything else, um, not really, no. <laughs> okay, no, arguably Zara sent a drowned. All of these mons, okay, so. These three are ban worthy. This f okay. These four are ban worthy, not the Dreadbolt. So as she's a single, super solid breaker that breaks just about everything and doesn't really have a downside. Ferimosa, um, the second fastest on boosted mon of a tier. <laughs> that has a plethora of extremely viable sets that makes it incredibly hard to prepare for. Mermel, incredibly solid steel type in the tier. Very bulky physically as well, especially, and incredibly strong wool breaker. Zamazenta Trowned is a box art legendary. <laughs> I mean, that's what needs to be said, really. You know? 
And then you have Dragapult itself. A mom that's always nice. Always nice to have, and you can fit it on quite a few teams. But it's never a mom that I'm looking at as like, oh, I need a Dragapult team, you know? Same with Pex. You know, Pex is nice to have, just because it makes games a lot easier to deal with, because, oh, they brought in a mon, Pex. <laughs> and then maybe you have a dedicated Pex answer, and then you can double and do whatever. <laughs> Same with Zapdos. Zapdos is in a very similar position to Moltres right now. Super good switching to just pretty much every physical attack room that's here. It's always nice. <coughs> Blissey and Chansey. Classic pink blob pairing. <coughs> Surprisingly very good outside of stool this gen, you know? Boots has really helped Blissey just become a very established piece of OU. And just being able to, uh, you know, pivot out of everything. Just being a good switch in. You know, it's very similar to Pex currently. And it can fit on offensive teams, which is cool. You know, same with Ferrothorn, very good pivot into all of Mons. I think Spadef's better than Fizzdef right now. Just because it's able to check a lot of special Mons. Obviously not Heatran, but, you know, the Dragons, like, la the Lotties. Yeah, Mons like. <sighs> And it can still check mons like, uh, you know, Garchomp, like Rillaboom, even without defense investment. Let me put Charizard in the sun. As well as Victini, arguably. <coughs> yeah, just uh, overall very solid. You know, either ban worthy or just very good mons in this tier. <coughs> and don't put Dallas Zapdos in ass. I think it's definitely, for me, become worse and worse over time. You know, at first I was like, oh my god, incredible, it's such a wall breaker. But the meta is just not suited for it at all. Fighting flying in a slew of very strong, you know, electric types, like Tapu Koko, flying types like Zapdos, like Moltres. The fact that you can get burnt super easily, and Defiance pretty hard to proc, just overall makes it a very, you know, just, you just don't want to use it, really. <clears throat> Think of mons you don't really want to use... I think I have to put Reggie Legi here. It's a very good-ish mon, but you know, it's like Dratovish. I never enjoyed using Dratovish on ladder, because everyone has a Seismitoad and everyone has a Drown type, you know, usually Landorus, and it's just, that's just how it goes. It's just, Reggie Legi's alright, but you know, he, he's trying his best, and he is a, a relative to Reggie Rock, so you have to respect it, but not the best. Garchomp, definitely cool. Uh, I think this is a mon. I think it's very cool and worth building around. Uh, Spell shot, super good and interesting buff for it. I don't think it's a very solid dragon stab, but I don't think it's relied on its dragon stab too much. <laughs> on average, you're hitting slightly less than dragon claw, but dragon claw is never really your like. Well, this mon clicks EQ. Let's be honest. <coughs> It clicks EQ and it clicks Stonehenge on mons that don't get hurt by EQ. That's pretty much what it does. Very solid at still doing that, obviously. And now with scale shots, a lot scarier as a sweeper. Still does rock sets very well. Can still obviously do Rocky Helmet decently, but... You know, it's definitely past its prime for that because of mons like Moltres and Zapdos in the tier now. So it's more relegated to an offensive role, which is still cool. We're still good at now we get to Nidoking. A lot of people, I feel like, enjoy this mod a lot, and I think it's cool, but I think it's, it's just not not there for me. Honestly, super good breaker, all things considered, but I don't know. I don't know. Swamp is a real one, though, let's be honest. I mean, I hate to keep on putting ground types in here, but it's just, when a team is obligated to run a ground type, because of mons like Reggie, Alecki, and Matea. You're given options. And most of the time, your options are kind of limited, and you're kind of going to choose one of the three. So you're ch choosing between, you know, Swampert, Landorus, or arguably Garchomp. And for me, for my money, I'm a Swampert man, even before Landorus, honestly. Flip turn is so good. 
It hits reasonably hard, all things considered. EQ, all high horsepower, very good additions. <laughs> and as well as, you know, it's rocks and toxic and it just does what it does. And it's just, you know, it's just good at doing it. <clears throat> yeah, I should have brought, like, water up. My throat's a little parched. Uh, I put the Romans on this list. <coughs> to get the numbers up to 69. These are definitely all right Mons. Mons that are probably gonna see uh, a little bit of use, especially once Rotom Wash can fit on more offensive teams when the time comes. But for now, they're just all right. Yeah, they're interesting. They fit on teams pretty well, but you know they're not gonna be seeing too much usage. Like we look at the Rotoms, they're both UU currently. I should definitely see that change in future. I think Heat might stay in UU for a while. Wash might move up to OU when the time comes. But I don't think any of them are going to dip below. Just because Nasty Plot was such a huge addition <coughs> for both of them. Uh, Jirachi, another mon I just added. Uh, it's cool, but it's not that cool. You know, Carmine's good. All the other sets it has is good, like stuff. But it's just okay. Yeah, it's just, it's just okay. Nine Tails, <coughs> and by extension, Grimmsnarl. <laughs> you know, we look at HO leads, and we're like, look at the four of them. And you see, you know, Toto is definitely the best here. You know, I'm gonna change Toto to worth building around. It's definitely thinking about HO. I'd want to use Toto, and Toto is fun sometimes. I mean, you look at Regieleki, very fast mon, which can set screens, but, you know, kind of, kind of, like, dies immediately afterwards, like, it clicks explosion, so it has very little utility otherwise. Nine Tails obviously gets it up very quickly and can hypnosis straight after, but Hail Chip's annoying, and it's kind of abusable. Grim Snarl is probably the best of those three, you know, excluding Koko, because it's just lacking the pivoting that makes Koko just so damn good as a screen setter. Though, Prince of Taunt, Prince of T-Wave, Prince of Screens, very good on Grim Snarl. <laughs> Corv is definitely It Exists. I think it's very... It's a cool mod, very cool mod, but I can't say I want to build around it, because it's not currently. It's a mod that kind of being outclassed, or at least it doesn't fit the meta well. It's still an extremely solid mon, but Steel Flying is pretty hard to use. Especially, you know, now. I mean, when things like Acid Drill aren't even that big of a problem offensively anymore, you know, something's up. Still, though, very good pivot into mons like Landorus, into Acid Drill, obviously, into a lot of dragons, because, especially against Velades, who run Mystical Fire sometimes, you know, technically you can run mirror armor, but pressure's better. Just, you know, it's solid, but it's definitely seen the limelight, and now it's went back down. Slowbro, this is definitely a mon worth building around. Slowbro as uh, Shifu is insanely good. It's probably the best offensive core in the entire tier. There's really nothing that takes Future Sight Wicked Blow at all. Or Future Sight CC, for that matter. It's just really solid. And Slowbro is just a fun mon. You know, it's a lot light pets, light blissy. It takes more damage than those mons because it is just less bulky, but in return it's a lot less passive than those mons. You know, clicking Future Sight, clicking Scald. Obviously, I mean, it is still passive, but it can kind of get away with it because it's on such an offensive team already that, like, that little bit of momentum sink to then increase your momentum in a later turn guaranteed is incredibly good consistency. Runeclist is super solid now as well. It's doing what it always does. I mean, it's always going to be viable in OU. Just doing whatever it does. I think it is very good just because after an Acid Armor, after a Carmind, it's able to beat near enough everything. Mandibuzz is not as good as it has been for a while now. So it's very easy to get past that. And other dark types in Matera are a lot less common as well. I mean, generally dark types outside of Tita are in a pretty weird spot. And with T-Spike support, uh, Reinclus beats Tita. 
So Reinflus is able to muscle through even mons you'd expect to be checks, which is a very good trait to have. And it's definitely a very interesting mon. A lot like Sweet Tune, but I think honestly a little more potent as an endgame mon. <laughs> Let's get Titar out of the way because I've mentioned it. Titar, the real one. Alright, this is right next to Heatran for me. <laughs> Titar's been a real one since day one. Alright. It had a little bit of a dip in Gen 8, but it's back now. Very solid outside of sand teams. Inside sand teams, it does what it always does. It is quite possibly the best dark type outside of a Shifu uh, single. <coughs> and it's definitely the probably best defensive dark right now. Just because of the support it provides. You know, I mean, Rock Blast always good. You know, most of the time you're going to be seeing, you know, this can be a rock set, you know, with, you know, you can run Thunder Wave, you can run Rock Blast, you can run whatever you want. It has a lot of very solid moves. Let me see if I can find a Tyranitar team. Um, nope. Huh, I don't have one. <coughs> I thought I did. But you know what Tita does. Tita does what a man does. It beats everything in the tier. <laughs> well, more than just everything, it beats stuff that it needs to beat. And I think just having Tita be a very solid neutral check to a lot of mons, along with being very good against very specific mons, like the ever present birds in the tier, as well as obviously uh, the Lardies with our Aura Sphere. Which, I mean, they are usually running to hit Titar and to hit Heatran, but, you know, what does that say about the boys right here? <laughs> you know, Titar's just great. Let's talk about Rillaboom. It's... It exists. I'll say it. <laughs> it exists. It's definitely not bad. It's it's definitely a lot worse than it has been. But it's not bad. I think the potential pairing of Rillaboom Cart is very interesting. I think it should definitely be in a decent spot depending on the team it's used on, but <laughs> you know, unlike before where it was able to arguably break with Grassy Glide, it's a lot harder to click for a move now. And I think that's what's best. I think like Coco, <laughs> it's a mon that's more balanced now. I think it's a mon that has very defined checks, but a very defined win con. But you know, there's mons like Feromosa from it here which Wincon is clicking Quiver Dance once, so, yeah. Cinderace is a Dragapult tier, I'd say. It's a very good mon, always just super solid whenever you use it, it feels like. Just, even if you click U-turn all game, you know, let's put Ghost Horse in this tier as well, while I'm at it. Just super good. And, uh, let's put Buzzwall in this tier. I love Buzzwall, honestly. It's just a really solid. Let's talk backwards then. Buzzle is just a very solid, f physically defensive check to a lot of Mons Matir. Similarly to Mons like Ferrothorn, like Heatran, like Landris, which I've talked about before. <laughs> but what it provides uh, is consistent recovery, which few of those Mons actually have, which is extremely good for it. Uh. Spectria, super good setup and specs and scarf, you know, it does a lot. Has very few consistent checks. Even Blissey with Shadow Ball loses to a Snarl set or a Calm Mind set. And finally, you have Cinderace, super fast, super strong pivot. Hits super effectively with pretty much everything it hits, just because of Stab and how dumb it is. Honestly, just super good. <laughs> now, uh, we've got, we're pretty much left with. None of these are OU anymore. So, let's just do a quick fire round. I put Gastrodon on this tier to get the numbers up. Gastrodon's Gastrodon. It does stuff, but the mons it's beating aren't the best right now. So, you could argue it's not really the best suited. But it definitely has a niche here. Like, oh, Gastrodon always has a niche. But with a much more applicable water ground in the tier, it's definitely struggling. Third water ground is quagged. I mean, this is reserved to hard stool. I prefer not to play hard stool. Chansey is a mon that I kind of put on here because it's another mon that's relegated to hard stool, 
but arguably Blissey is just as good, if not better. The extra ball from Chansey is nice, but the lack of Mega Sableye in this tier <coughs> does bring it down quite a lot, because I think a big part of <coughs> OU Stool and Gen 7 was the Chansey Mega Sableye pairing, and no Mega Sableye definitely puts Chansey in a bad position. Well, Corona similarly put it in, you know, the interesting tier. Very strong Quiver Dance user again, but I'm outclassed by Theramosa currently. <laughs> Definitely struggles with quite a few mods in the tier. Can't break something like Moltres. Just generally, it's you know, can't break T Tar either, or T Tran, really. You know, it's just kind of a lot of the mods added, kind of bully Voltrona a lot. Shudinja. Now, you might be seeing, you know, T Tar Sand and all this other residual stuff, and you're like, oh, how's Shudinja even gonna survive? But honestly, I mean, you look at some of the mons, and you're like, you know, I mean, it pulls a few. I mean, Shedinja, much like Gastrodon, is always going to have a niche in a tier. It's obviously not too good, but I had to put it here to get numbers up. Persephone's actually a cool mon. I don't know if I'm actually, I don't know if I feel much from it, though. Because it's Distro, and it's implying that Distro is dead, and to me... That's just not sitting right with me. Distro is very much alive. And, uh, yep, he's actually... Oh, uh, what's this? Uh... Ooh. Ooh, I... It would appear as though... He's moved into his own dark tier. Wow, incredible. Uh... Nice, nice job, Lucephalon, you did it. And uh, these guys are in new now. Um, let's let's slap Weavile in new as well. <laughs> it's a mom that's obviously gonna always be banned from UU, but it's a mom that's just not suited to OU at all. It's definitely one of these physical tactics that's hard punished by a lot of contact that it uses. And Chocolate Cho is always cool, but I prefer screens. And Lele is, uh, I think it's a mod that you have to build around. It's very cool though. A very strong breaker, a lot like these other breakers you know, I've put up here. <laughs> but it's rewarding all the same. Anyway, I think I've ranted for like, it feels like an hour, honestly. <laughs> you know, to summarize my thoughts, I could put all of the real ones into a singular team and it would be better than 90% of what I can make with this, all I'm saying. And that's pretty much it. <clears throat> you know, if I had to actually say, you know, Heatran's obviously my favourite, Blissephalon's probably my least favourite because it says Disco is dead, otherwise I'd say Blaziken's probably my least favourite one to use in OU currently. Uh, the meta itself, I'm pretty interested in seeing how it continues to develop because it's definitely nowhere near the point of like ending in terms of development. I mean let's have a look at uh, ground tundra teams. Yeah I'm surprised they're not. Oh it's because my rock type on every team is going to be Reggie Rock of course. But you know I've got a lot of ground tundra teams I've made. Uh, you know HO, I've got a lot of hyper balance you could argue. More balanced teams, Trick Room Sun, this type of offensive team. A lot of stuff, a lot of cool stuff. <coughs> this meta is definitely fun to build in. This meta is definitely fun to play in. There's definitely problems, but there's always problems. And I think this kind of just says it all, really. Because realistically, I've, I have... You know, a lot of these mods, I'm fine You, You know, I'm going to put Spectre down, but... <laughs> I'm fine using almost all of these mons up here, and very interested in using quite a lot of these mons. I want a couple of them banned, but I'm fine using them. These mons are just generally either I don't want to use them much, or they're just not too good. These mons are cool, but I don't want to use them because they're not too good. And then these mons are trash. You know, it's I've included a lot of non-OU mons here, and still, there's a lot of choice. And that's just something I'm very happy to have in the tier. As bad of a player as I am. 
And that's really all I wanted to say. So, I will, I will end this before I yawn myself to death. <laughs>